Hey, welcome back to this week's Q&A Fridays. As always, I'm your host, Stanley Tate, and I'm joined by my co-host, Emma. What's going on, Emma? Hey, everybody. All right, so what do you have for me this week? So this week, we have a question from Tim, who basically says, our son is delinquent on his private student loans, which have grown from 48K to over 80K. And my wife, who's retiring in two years, co-signed on these loans. So after making payments, my wife's credit score has been negatively affected and now she can't refinance the debt herself. What can I do to protect my wife and get through to my son? All right, so this is a tough situation where you have the primary borrower, the child is not making the payments and then the parent as the co-signer is the one stepping up to make the payments, but now as life happens, they aren't able to keep up with those financially. And then there's a question like, what do we do? It's killing my credit score. And unfortunately, there's not going to be much that you would be able to do as a co-signer to restore your credit and getting off the loan is going to be hard. Now, what I mean by that is refinancing is going to be challenging because the primary borrower would need to be the one to refinance it in their name, which means they have to be a willing participant, which also means they have to have enough credit and income in order to do so. And then they also have to overcome the late history on the payments as well. And that's going to be an impossible situation. So almost always refinancing is going to be off the table here. Okay. And are there any legal consequences for Tim's wife who co-signed on this loan? Yeah, I mean, so the legal consequences are going to be tied towards still getting the credit hit if payments aren't being made. And then potentially down the road, the loans end up defaulting and are what are called charged off. That's where they say, hey, the full balance is due they could end up taking her or the child or both of them to court and then try to garnish their wages, put a lien on the home, things like that. Now, typically retirement pay, 401k, those things are protected. So that'll be okay. Also, Social Security, want to make sure I make it clear. But there's also like, if you have money in the bank account, if you have a paycheck coming in, if you have a home with your name on it, those things could be at risk. Okay. And let's say Tim's son was willing to help in this situation. What would you recommend they do? Is that, was bankruptcy be a good option? Yeah. So if you have a child who they would like to pay, but they just can't pay, and now you're in a collaborative situation trying to find a solution, then we need to kind of talk through what the options are for a delinquent private student loan. So we know refinancing is going to be off the table. And if you stop paying, now you enter the stage where you're at risk of some type of lawsuit. But also when you stop paying, that opens up the possibility to maybe negotiating a settlement with the lender. Now, up until this point, they've been unwilling to work with you on payment options. Maybe they do a forbearance, interest rate reduction, things like that. But then once the loan defaults and it charges off, oftentimes that opens up another avenue of getting a payment you can afford by being able to negotiate a settlement, oftentimes for less than an old at zero or very little interest moving forward. That's a possibility. Now you asked me about bankruptcy. That is also an option. And it could be that the child files the bankruptcy. But the important thing to keep in mind is that bankruptcy by itself does not solve the student loan problem. It has to be bankruptcy plus adversary proceeding. And an adversary proceeding, basically, it's just a lawsuit inside the bankruptcy case, but you can't file the lawsuit until you file the bankruptcy. Okay, and if um, Tim's child was to file bankruptcy himself, would that affect Tim and his wife? Well, it affect him from the standpoint that the bankruptcy will show up on the son's credit report, but it would not show up on the mother's credit report. Also, it will potentially stop paying. And here's what I mean by potentially. There are two different types of bankruptcy. There's chapter seven bankruptcy, there's chapter 13 bankruptcy. Chapter seven is over within three to four months pretty fast. That one does not have what we call a co-signer stay. And a co-signer stay is basically where they say, hey, the person who files bankruptcy, creditors can't go after them. But if they have any co-signers and there's no co-signer stay, then the creditors could still go after the co-signer. So if the son were seeking to protect the mother from collection calls, then they would look to file a chapter 13 because that'll stop everything. But as far as like 
the bankruptcy showing up on mother's credit report or the mother having to file bankruptcy, she doesn't have to file if the son is willing to do so. But there is this risk of there not being a co-signer stay, depending if they do a chapter seven or chapter 13. Okay. And let's say the son is not willing to collaborate. What are some of the ways that Tim and his wife can protect themselves, protect their homes, any legal strategies that you can think of? Well, yeah, and that's where we get into a tough situation where we may need to explore either settling or filing bankruptcy by the mother, right? Because there's not refinancing, unless they're able to get their own loan to pay off the loan or they have their own funds to pay off the loan, they're not gonna be able to get from under it. They can't refinance it because they need a willing participant from the primary borrower. And if that son is not willing to participate, then it's the mother who has to sort it out. So she may need to go get another loan or take some savings or retirement to pay off the loan. Now, typically I don't suggest that because if you're someone who's bordering on retirement, you are now kind of monitoring your chips to make sure you have enough to carry yourself for however long you expect to live. And so if we're trying to preserve those chips, then we need to look at what does settling look like? What does bankruptcy look like? And what are the outcomes there to see what those solutions might look like? So what do those outcomes look like? So with settling, what you'll see is there's going to be two avenues here. One, we may do like a lump sum settlement for somewhere between 35 and 60 cents on the dollar. Now, none of this is guaranteed, but these are kind of like what you'll see standard wise um, as a settlement. And it may be a lump sum and that'll be due right away once the settlement is reached. Or you may be able to do something where you put some money down and make payments over a three to four or five year period, depending on who the lender is. That's another one. And then the other case could be sometimes what we do is we negotiate the buy off of the co-signer and that may be cheaper. It's going to be a lump sum payment, but you may not need to come up with 35 or 50 cents on the dollar. You just may need to come up with 20 or 25 cents and you would buy your way off the debt and leave the primary bar to deal with it. Now, again, that's not guaranteed and it kind of changes lender to lender, creditor to creditor, but that's also an option with settlement. Now with bankruptcy, the outcome could be you walk away from the debt completely because the court grants you a discharge and that discharge would apply just to you, but the son will still be on the hook. It could be that you get granted a partial discharge where the judge says, okay, you can truly afford to pay X, so we're gonna get rid of Y. Could be that they just say, nope, you could pay the whole thing, which would suck. Or there also could be a settlement option where you agree to settle for less and you pay that amount over time or via lump sum. And that settlement option inside a bankruptcy may be for longer than five years. That may say 10 years, that may say 15 years. All these things are negotiable. None of it is guaranteed, but these are still likely better options than the one you currently have, which is you're stuck on a debt, you can't afford to pay, it's ruining your credit and there's no way out. Okay, and have you had any clients um, or do you know any people who have been in a similar situation where the child isn't paying and have they been able to get off? I've had numerous clients like this. There's, this is a very common scenario and sometimes a child is a willing participant. Sometimes they're not active in it. Sometimes they've co-signed for a friend, right? A friend's child. Those are the ones that really suck. I've had a lot of success with the settlement one. We've done several bankruptcies as well that have been helpful. Typically it's the co-signing parent that does it, or if the child is an active participant, then the child does it because they feel a responsibility. They're like, hey, if I can't pay, at least I can do this. Those are the ways out of it and those work. And, and the way I tell people, there's like, there's no magic solution here. And so we're choosing between all terrible options. We just need to choose the best terrible option. And that's a disempowering feeling, I think is the right way to say it, or you're not feeling empowered. And I get it, I get it, but then we have to make tough choices here and say, okay, here's where we're at. I need to triage the situation. Here are all the available facts. Here's all the available participants who are willing to help with this. What can we do to get this done? What's the best option? Considering all these terrible options. And then we do that. Okay. And 
Finally, this is a bit of a tricky question, but part of Tim's question was, how do I get through to my son? And this is really tough because it's a horrible situation for him. Do you have any advice for Tim? You know, what I, what I find is that there's so much shame, embarrassment, and kind of like the impossibility of it all that people shut down emotionally and shut off from relationships. And in those instances, what I find helpful is just delivering information. Not, there's no judgment here. It, you didn't ask for this, right? You didn't know what you were doing, right? You were 18 years old and you were like all gung-ho on going to school and you thought you were gonna be able to pay it off. And so assuming that that's what we're dealing with, with like the lack of like communication. A lot of times what I find works is just laying out facts and being incredibly positive about, we can do something here. I don't know what something looks like, but we will figure it out. Now, <laughs> that's one situation. You have the other one where the parent is like dogging the child because they're ruining the credit and it becomes this internal adverse situation. I don't know how you overcome that one because the family dynamic is so frayed because of the blame and uh, the you did this to me, and you're ruining it. And that's not helpful because if they could pay, they would pay. It's often the logic now. There's some situations where that's not the case. But in most cases, people want to pay the debts they have, but they just may not be able to. And in those situations, we need to kind of get rid of the shame and lay into the facts and it'll be incredibly positive about here's what this world can look like here's what we've seen be successful and let's work our way towards that thanks good advice i hope that was helpful tim i hope so uh tim if you're out there watching we would love to help you even if it's just having the initial conversation and empowering you with those facts so feel free to reach out we'll leave a link down below to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me or a member of our team and we also have the newsletter as well where we share a lot of this information free as well it comes out weekly on wednesdays anything else with this one emma no nope, that's all it for now all right. Well, thank you all for watching. As always, uh, we'll see you next Friday. Till then, peace.